Welcome, I am your host, Jose Reynoso. I am excited to share with you this upcoming interview with Matias Di Stefano. Matias Di Stefano has been traveling the world and he's been activating grids in the earth. He's been unlocking powerful information for the whole humanity to remember, to awaken to its highest potential. Welcome everyone. This is Jose Reynoso on Breath of Life, Unconscious Vitality. Today we have Matias Di Stefano. Welcome Matias. It's a pleasure to have you back and on an interview. Um, just to give a little snippet of all the amazing work you do. Um, ever since the young age of three years, um, you've been walking this planet, sharing your teachings, which could be summed up in I am. And I'm very excited to be able to dive deeper into I am, I am after a conversation in Giza almost a year ago. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so where in the world are you right now? I, I saw you were in Mount Shasta about a week ago. Where, where are you located right now? Right now in Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona. Oh, amazing. Okay, well, we're not so far. I'm, I'm in Ibiza right now, so in the same okay. time frame. Cool. So um, I've been having this question ever since we sat down in front of the Giza pyramids uh, you end up staying over a year you're going to be one year in the Giza and you end up staying a little bit longer what what has been your biggest aha moment from venturing into the great pyramid almost daily and experiencing the pyramids uh, almost as a as your breakfast every morning uh, what was what, what has been your biggest insight because I was there four days in a row and my life changed uh, I I just want to know what's a little snippet of your understanding of that I am after being for a while there. Well, um, I think that um, every day has been different. And uh, uh, some months were even deeper than others. Um, there were some days that the pyramid rejected me, like you cannot get, you cannot come in. Um, uh, so I guess that that if I must say the biggest uh, harm uh, was I guess that the first days when I when I went there for uh, the days out of time in late July 2020 when I just arrived to the pyramid and um, I got inside and not knowing anything about why I was there. Like actually I was expecting a whole different thing for that year. I was expecting for uh, um, being traveling around the planet into different places. Uh, so suddenly I, I faced the idea that uh, I have to be here for almost 400 days. Um, so what, what I'm supposed to do here, I have no clue. And when I got inside the pyramid um, that week, the first week that I went there, and I received this information that you are supposed to come here every day, um, the biggest um, thought, the biggest uh, idea, uh, uh, the connection that I have there was that Every time that I was inside the pyramid, I wasn't in Egypt. I wasn't inside the pyramid. I, I was in the middle of a sphere and the pyramid was just the skeleton of the sphere. And uh, when I was inside, I, was, I, I felt that I, that I was inside of the planet, like in the, in the core of the planet. And, uh, and that that place there was not meant to be a place to go up, but to go within to the core. And, uh, and that's why uh, whenever you go there to try to enlight or go, go, go to the heavens, um, actually you're going the wrong direction. It's like, um, 
that's why the messages of the I am started to come there all the time because I started to feel that I was in the core, not going anywhere. I was going every direction. And I guess that that was the moment, the first days that I went there that I understood what I was supposed to do during the whole year. And to see each one of the 360 degrees of the sphere. Wow, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, I guess now I'm, uh, you, you bring up um, maybe a sense that myself and many people on, on this journey uh, we've experienced of, okay, we're here meditating or we go to the Great Pyramid of Giza or any other spiritual activation. We want to transcend, go somewhere else. But what you're sharing is that really the message you got it was to go within. And um, that is uh, the basis of that I am as you've been sharing it. And 2021, you described it as the path of the dragon. Do you care to share a little bit with the audience why is this the path of the dragon? Yeah, um, the path of the dragon um, is basically every time that you start to watch yourself uh, deeply to yourself. I started the first path of the dragon when, uh, uh, in February 2012 uh, when I was here in Montserrat in Spain. Um, and uh, suddenly I felt this um, this voice telling telling me you have to face the dragon if you want to really save the planet, which is the lady. Uh, and I, I, I had this image of the dragon as something mythological that I never pay attention to. But with uh, the past of the years, um, I understood, uh, I, I went to the etymology of the word dragon uh, and it came it comes from a Greek verb, drakein, that means uh, to stare, to observe directly to the eyes. And so in, in Greek language, drakon means the one that stares at you. And, and this means about, this is related with the priests or priests that were in the doors of the temple, staring at each one that were willing to come uh, to see if they were really able to, to get in, if you, if you really were ready to do it. So the dracon, the people from, uh, the ones that stare, uh, were these, um, these beings that helps you to have self-observation. So that's why the path of the dragon actually is not a dragon or looking for a dragon uh, is about observing yourself. That's what really means. The path of the dragon is the self-awareness, the self-observation of everything that you have within. So for me, is um, uh, I travel around the planet, so I see these observations in every part of my body, which is the planet. So I created this path around the world in order to see the world with our inner eyes, to observe the planet in a different way. That's why the, dragon, the path of the dragon is to walk around the planet and to um, contemplate how we can observe ourselves through the eyes of the planet and how we can change our point of view of the world um, by, by observing ourselves. That, mm. that would be the path of the dragon actually wow that that just blew my mind because literally that's it makes so much sense why so many people are so afraid of looking at the dragon they're so yeah. afraid of the dragon because it's like people at least i grew up with this connotation this narrative that dragons are like evil or it's like danger every time you hear but it's like because we are afraid of seeing ourselves or afraid of seeing our mother the earth right um yeah do, do you see that people are, are more ready now to really i, I guess even the, the pandemic or whatever is happening in the world has forced people in some way to to stare to the dragon to stare to themselves uh, do you yeah. see people evolving in this way that we are ready to see the truth 
Uh, well, a huge amount of people that that dare to to stand and and to see what happens to the world right now in a different way, like saying, "Why is this happening to me?" or uh, "What is this showing me about my life?" Those people were facing the dragon, and other people were just scared about the dragon. I, I've seen a lot of people that have been working with spirituality uh, growing faster these times, like understanding so many things that um, in other moments they wouldn't. It, it would be impossible. Myself, I, I changed a lot uh, with everything that happened this time and helped me understand the world in a different way. Um, but I see a lot of chaos and fear of all those people that had never prepared themselves to face the dragon. They were all the time um, not only scared, but also not believing in a dragon. And uh, uh, this, this is because history, as I said, facing the dragon uh, is something that, it, that was created in, in Asia uh as as an idea of a, a totemic idea saying that um that you have to to face um to face every one of your emotions in order to gain back the power of your emotions the potentials so the dragon was created as an image to face all your fears in order to uh, take control of your poten of, of your potentialities so in Asia, it was uh, natural to create these images of the dragon through different animals that has different potentials, so you can relate them as a whole. But in Middle Ages in Europe, they had the image of the dragon as those who are terrible from the East. So uh, all the cultures in Europe and the Mediterranean Sea, they were fighting against Asia so the dragon became the bad guy um, that they were fighting against with. So, um, so that's why in our traditions, uh, if you go to Japan, that's not like this because they had a completely different idea of what a dragon is. Uh, but in Europe, it was all these knights fighting the dragon because uh, the dragon represented all the people from the east that they were fighting. And um, uh, so all that is that all this tradition from Europe had created in us the idea that we have to kill the dragon because the dragon is something bad and um, it's a creature that we have to 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 go against with and and this is why most of the people instead of facing the dragon and understanding that it means all the potentialities that we have behind our fears and our needs so we just run people run and get scared and that's why it creates so much chaos but for the people that have been staring within uh, it makes total sense now like it's the perfect time to face this dragon. It's, it's the perfect time. And when you were saying the different narrative the people in the East had compared to the people in the West or we have, uh, I always remember the words slay the dragon. And it's been like this eternal fight chasing an imaginary dragon when really all we had to do is look within and create balance and, and befriend the dragon which is our emotions to be able to find that stillness.